All right. Um, I swear this will be the last <laughs> antenna um, video that I do, but um, a friend of mine was looking at our, my videos, and uh, I was measuring the uh, uh, return loss SWR of the uh, of antennas, uh, rubber duck antennas, for the uh, uh, things like a Valfung HT uh, two meter four forty that type of thing. Um, and uh, the only antennas that I really have these days are the cheap, uh, the cheap um, Chinese ones. Um, some of which seem to be okay, and most of which seem to be very, very bad. <laughs> or at least they kind of lie on the sticker. So, um, so he was over uh, yesterday and brought with him um, some old antennas that he had for the last 20 years and hadn't gotten rid of. So... Uh, let me show you what those are. Uh, so this is a, uh, a Comet brand. Uh, very nice. I remember Comet. I, I don't know if they actually are still in business or not. Uh, but this is an actual Japanese, uh, uh, Japanese antenna. And it claims to be a uh, dual bander. It says uh, 144, 430 megahertz. And then a bunch of uh, Japanese characters. And it says it's good for 10 watts, uh, 50 ohms, um, BNC connector. Oh, old school BNC. Um, and uh, it has a 1.5 dB gain at 2 meters and a 3.2 dB gain at 430 megahertz. Something the uh, Chinese antennas don't tell you about. Um, so let's, uh, let's pull this out of this little package here. So it's a Comet... Uh, Super Slender SH55. So it doesn't have a lump anywhere in it. It's just uh, one one continuous diameter. It has a loading coil at the bottom here, um, and it is BNC. Okay, so he brought that by. Uh, the original price. Uh, this was probably back. Oh gosh. I'm trying to remember what I got him into ham radio <laughs> and uh, I'm trying to remember that that must have been in the 90s I don't think it was in the 80s but I think it was in the 90s it was 30 33 dollars for the uh, comet antenna uh, the other antenna I'm very excited about because it is an official diamond antenna not a Chinese knockoff diamond antenna but this one is the diamond antenna corporation made in Japan now, this one, I think, has a bit of a clue about the uh, Chinese ones. It says it's 2 meter or 70 centimeters for receiving and transmitting, and 120, 150, 300, 450, 800, 900 bands for receiving. That's very interesting that people actually put receiving data on the, uh, on the package. Um, and I think the strange... Uh, the strange antennas that I get here from China. Uh, it also says diamond antenna, but it says 440, uh, 144, 430, 900 megahertz, and wideband receiving. So that's very close to this. It says, it says it's uh, uh, 2 meters and uh, 70 centimeters, and then 900 megahertz. And then, and wideband receiving. So I think that's what this wideband receiving here is, the one, 120, 150, 300. So I think that's where that comes from. Um, I wrote 220 on here because that's the only thing the Santana is good for, which isn't mentioned on the label. Um, so we have, uh, take that out of its package. Um, so it is a RH77CA, again, diamond antenna made in Japan. So it has a dual diameter. It has a fat diameter and then a skinny diameter. So that's kind of interesting. I don't know if that's actually... I don't know if this is an adductor for loading or whether it's just for bendiness. They wanted to protect it a little bit more by having a heavier diameter, di diameter at the bottom. But anyway, we have that one to test. And then the other one that he brought me was... Uh, I guess he has a Yesu HT... Um, and uh, it says dual band antenna, so this is uh, the one that came on his radio. And I think we saw before, the ones that actually were on radios actually tested really, really well, because they had to, and they had to work, so we'll test that one as well. All right, 
So let's go ahead and turn this on. I put a little BNC adapter. And some people complain about, oh, you didn't calibrate with uh, the right, uh, this or that. Um, you know, at these frequencies, it doesn't really matter much. And for what we're measuring, we're actually just measuring return loss. And there's no phase information in return loss. So um, I don't think it really matters. So anyway, I'm not going to do it. So let's, let's try the little short one out here. Uh, let's pop that on. And the first thing that we see is a double dip. Uh, there's a good dip here at 144 and another dip here at 430. Um, and they're about a 10 dB dip. So about 2 to 1. S, uh, S, if you like SWR, that's a VSWR of 2 to 1. Um, so not great, but acceptable for these little short antennas. You're not going to expect much if your wavelength is much, much shorter than your usable wavelength, the, 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 the length of the antenna is much, much shorter than the wavelength you're interested in. You're not going to get a good SWR. Okay, so uh, that is the Yesu. Is any markings on it? It just says dual band. That's all it says, Yesu dual band. Okay, so let's try the diamond antenna. That's the one with the uh, double diameter here. Let's pop that on. And, ooh, very nice double dip. Um, this is going down at 2 meters. It's about uh, 15 dB of return loss. And at 430, it looks like it's about 12 dB of return loss. Let's move it around. Oh, there we go. We're getting down to about 20 dB of return loss now at 440. So it depends on which way you point it and with how you grab it and all that stuff. That's, that's the problem with these... Uh, with these little short antennas, uh, the capacitance loading and, and stuff of your hand matters, and orientation, if it's up or if it's sideways, it matters. Uh, but you can see it's a very nice antenna, and it has a third dip. Um, so let's go over here to the third dip, see where that is. Uh, so it's about, it's about there somewhere. It's about 675. 675 megahertz, so not much use, but it does have a third, it does have a third dip. Interesting. Okay. And the last one is the Comet antenna. I'll pop that on. And, uh, whoa, look at that 440 uh, dip. That's 30 dB. Wow. So it's about 15 dB at 144 and 30 dB at, at 430. So, ooh, oh, look at that thing dip. Um, so it has very, very nice resonance at, uh, very nice resonance at, uh, at 430. Yeah, it depends on how you hold it again. It goes anywhere from 15 dB to 30 dB, depending on how you grab it and what it's next to and all those other things. So anyway. Uh, the real uh, moral to the story here, here is, uh, you know, back when Japan was actually the king of uh, king of ham radio, um, everything was done really, really well. And once the cheap Chinese people got a hold of it, they kind of lost quality control. <laughs> so anyway, um, fun to look at some old antennas. Um, they are a very, very nice quality construction. Um, they just don't, they just don't build them like this anymore. So, uh, if you find some old ones on eBay, grab them. Um, although you're not going to find any new, uh, any old ones with SMA connectors on them. So that's a problem. Um, but if you have a, a radio that has a BNC, then, uh, yeah, look for some, look for some used ones made in Japan. Oh my gosh, I almost forget, I uh, forgot. Um, we have some bonus, some bonus footage here. Um, we have a, um, he also included in his uh, grab bag an antenna that came off of something. He wasn't, he didn't remember what it came off of, but um, it's an F connector, which makes you think it's TV land. Uh, F connectors are the screw on, and the center connector is actually part of the coax cable itself. So um, it 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 came attached. This is this is my adapter here. I have a BNC F connector adapter, uh, but it came with this cable attached to it, which has an F. A female F on it, and this weird thing on the other end, which is also, I think, a UHF uh, connector for a television set. So, once again, I think it's TV land. Um, so, let's go ahead and see 
what this antenna does. It looks certainly not a it's certainly not a transmit antenna. It's it's, it's strictly a receive antenna, I'm sure. Um, now, what did I do with my what did I do with my adapter? Oh no, I just took it off. My BNC adapter. What did I do with it? Oh, let me look for it. I'll come back. All right, I found it. It was stuck in one of the other antennas. So we will put this on channel zero and uh, turn it on and connect up our little funny little antenna, which is just uh, a little thing that sticks up. And it's got a, it's got a, ten a tension. It's all in. It's like it's all in French. Anyway, it has one dip, which is interesting. Well, here's our one dip. So let's let's go over and see where that dip is. So that dip is around 350 megahertz. So 350 megahertz is kind of between the VHF bands and the UHF bands of television. So again, I'm thinking it's a TV received antenna. Um, so don't use that for any radios.